Hello and welcome back. Here I am starting the painting stage. As you see, I already primed everything um, using um, Steinle Res Black here for the prime, so that's all primed up. Uh, now, uh, painting the tracks also in black, and as I mentioned before, they're kind of fragile, so kind of broke this one in half, but no big deal. Easy enough to glue back together. Um, so, going here with the painting scheme, which is this one that I'm going to follow. Uh, the base coat is this warm tan. Uh, closest color that I have is this uh, light brown by Vallejo. Um, you know, once it gets a little bit of weather up, we'll darken up a little bit and think we'll be fine. Um, then you got some olive drab uh, for the green there. And for the tracks uh, over the black, I'm just going to paint some, some rust color like I did with the uh, uh, tiger tracks before. Uh, for the light blue, for the missiles, I'm just going to take some white and blue, mix it to taste. All right, so let's uh, start this. All right, be right back. Hello, welcome back. Here I am. I right, uh, did the base coat of that light tan uh, color all over the vehicle, and now for the camo. Uh, I'm doing this one, so it's a pretty simple um, pattern of just the uh, the olive green there. Um, you know, although some of the other patterns here are a little bit more colorful, interesting, like this Dominican and the, uh, what's the other one here? The Indonesian one. That you see there. But I'm going to do this one because it has the missiles. Uh, so see I have all this painted up here and I have the missiles. I see the missiles is a light blue color. I just painted the overall light blue and then I'm going to mask off the center portion and spray over the uh, olive drab over that. Uh, the light blue was just a combination of some um, Stanley Res white primer and a little bit of blue just mixing it to taste to more or less match that uh, missile blue uh, that they have there. So close enough for me. Um, tracks, you know, painted black, then the rust color, then we'll do the rest of the finishing on that. But uh, the main vehicle, here we are. Uh, so what I did, I mixed up a little bit of the uh, olive drab, a little bit of water, and a little bit of uh, Vallejo Retarder into a separate bottle, mixed this up. And what I'm going to do is actually going to hand paint the pattern, uh, which I did a little bit here experimenting here on the rear that you see here. Oops. Yeah, I almost knocked and broke that off. All right. As you see here. Uh, so basically all I'm doing is just putting a little bit of this on my little palette, which is just a uh, cup here. And I'm just doing a couple of drops at a time. I'm not, I'm not trying to do the whole vehicle. Uh, why am I brush painting as opposed to uh, airbrushing? Uh, mainly because I think I'll have better control putting on the pattern. I mean, that's really the gist of it. Um, so basically, I'm just going to follow more or less along um, the pattern that I see here. So just continue with this pattern, which extends into uh, this uh, part here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of outline where the camera goes and then fill in the rest. Now, since this is thin, and I'm hand brushing it, I'm going to do a couple of different layers. Uh, the reason I thin it and put it the retarder just so it'll flow better. I don't want it drying up and leaving uh, brush strokes as I'm working with this, or at least minimize the brush strokes that I would have uh, with this as I'm working with it. As you see there, so just go one pattern. Now for this back here, you really can't see where it goes, so kind of need to use your imagination um, as far as what this would have been here underneath the uh, the turret part. And even with the retarder, this dries fairly quickly. So it's not too big deal. Also, you might notice here that uh, I am having a little bit of clog issue here on the um, on the mesh here, uh, and that's probably either the paint spraying it or when I was applying the uh, super glue to glue them on, I probably got a little bit too much there. But since this is going to be underneath the turret, you're really not going to notice it too much. So that's just a problem on my end. Um, but here on the sides, it kind of there's a little bit of clogging here, but otherwise not too much. And hopefully, it'll be cover up with the uh, uh, camo pattern as I do this as such. So anyway, so it's just something, you know, put in a movie, watch a TV show, put on some music, and I can just 
and go about my business about doing this. So it's going to take me a little while. Um, yes, airbrushing might be quicker, but like I said, I think this will just give me a little bit more control about putting the paint down and putting the pat in the pattern that I want to replicate here. All right, so that's basically it. So I'll be back after I've applied the uh, olive green, um, olive drab um, camo to the whole thing. All right, so be right back. Hello and welcome back. Here I am. I'm done with the uh, camo pattern. Uh, it didn't take too long. Probably spent like maybe an hour or so going through it, painting it, letting it dry, and then spent another maybe 20 minutes uh, giving it a little, little light second coat uh, through the pattern. Um, so it's uh, pretty pretty easy to hand paint. Um, I also went ahead and painted some of the black for the tires. Let me just take this off here so it doesn't fall. Um, and for the wheels here, painted the the black rubber. Um, also did the uh, the exhaust that goes in here. Again, just using a little brush, small liner brush, uh, make that easy. Uh, so my next step is just to go through and finish painting the rest of the details here, like the khaki color for the canvas cover there, um, the lights uh, and the tools and so forth, and after that seal it up and start the weathering. So I'll be back uh, once I'm ready to start the uh, weathering process. All right, thank you. Hello and welcome back. Here I am. Finish up with a little, uh, whatever little detail painting that I need to do. Um, seems nice and glossy. I put on the uh, clear coat on it to get it started for the uh, weathering. Um, so many, not too many decals. It's like five, three there, and two more here in the back. So it's as simple as you put on the axe there, paint it, and put it on for now. Um, the tools for here, the side of the turret, I'll put those on at the end. Um, as far as the detail painting, I had no problems putting in the lenses there, and that's just the clear pieces painted silver on the back and then uh, glued on. Um, what I'm using for glue to adhere it to is just uh, some more clear. Once it dries, it's pretty sticky, so it serves as a good uh, glue. Uh, for some of the red lights there, you can see there, uh, I just put a little bit of silver first, and then I used a little bit of transparent red. Uh, specifically, I have this transparent Cretex uh, red color and I use this uh, for the red lights there. It's usually the same thing that I use for the uh, aircraft's uh, lights, navigation lights th that I do. Uh, so my next step is to start the weathering. So I'm using some of these uh, AK mud effects which are nice, the, the, the different shades of brown and they're um, thinner here. Um, so I just mix up a little batch of dark brown here and I'm going to start applying uh, it to the vehicle. Um, what I'm going to do here is for the running track, for the wheels down here, I'm just going to apply it, let it dry, so it's a little darker here. For the top, I'm going to apply it and then using a uh, Q-tip, just uh, wipe it off. So, <laughs> excuse me. So like you can see here, I did a little bit here, this little corner here. You can see it's a different shade from the other yellow. Uh, you can see a little bit more details of the rivets. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be my first step, and I'll come back and show you my next steps on that. All right. Be right back. Hello and welcome back. Here I am. Um, so I did that little bit of weathering with the uh, AK interactive things. Um, wipe them off. So now you can tell from the other uh, segment here. So you see it's a little dirtied up, a little darkened up. You can see some of the more of the details and some of the panel lines. So you put on the tools there. Um, so what I'm going to do next. So I let this dry for a few hours, a couple hours already. Um, so what I'm going to do next is put a overall. Um, weathering kind of a dusting effect and for that I am going to use uh, see where did I put it here um, I'm going to use 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 this um, this is a little mixture of watered down uh, flory uh, wash specifically this is their sand so I kind of made a little watery slurry of it uh, thin and what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna airbrush it actually which you hear there the background my compressor so I'm just gonna Airbrush this over the, uh, the vehicle, let it dry. So this is really, um, really uh, watered down. So it's not gonna. It's just gonna be a little bit of a, pretty much like what I'm hoping for, just to give it a, a just an overall coating over it. So kind of like a wash. Like a filter. 
tip. I'm using actual, you know, these are made out of uh, pigments, so it's going to be actual pigments here. These clay washes. So it should give it a little bit of a different feel than if I just use, like, you know, painting some Tamiya buff, missing some Tamiya buff over it. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to give this a nice wet coat. I think the thing about spraying this, I mean, this is mostly water and pigment, so, you know, no big deal about spraying it. I mean, you don't want to be breathing it all the time, but, uh, you know, it shouldn't be too bad for you. I'm going to get a little bit more. Let's see where I put it. There you go. And now. All right, so I'm just gonna let that uh, air dry for a few minutes and I'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. I kind of jumped ahead and uh, finished up the kit here. Um, so after I did the, uh, what you saw me spraying over that flurry um, wash over it, I let that dry um, and then I put a matte coat over the whole thing. Uh, except for the uh, missiles, the guided missiles here, I kind of left them more gloss just to give a bit of contrast uh, on it. Because you got the uh, missile blue band there. Um, so. And there she is. So I'll give you a little tour here, then I'll switch cameras angles uh, and talk about the kit in a second. Um, so overall, um, kit went over pretty good, very good. I uh, highly recommend the kit. Um, I think I recently saw this kit on sale for about 25 US dollars. So I think that's a pretty good uh, good deal for this quality uh, type of kit and the detail. I mean, it is a relatively small kit. As you can see there, I can just cover it up with my hand. Um, but uh, it's nice, you know, it's a relatively quick build. Uh, it's nice that they have the photo etch, I think, adds to, especially here on the sides uh, up for the missiles. Um, I don't know, it really adds much the grills over the engine parts uh, because honestly, you know, back here, I mean, it can be kind of covered and you really can't see anything through it. But uh, anyway, uh, so let me switch camera's angles and show you the uh, on the side. Alright, so uh, here she is, just giving a little side view, the tools in place, and the, the weathering, kept the weathering uh, light, I mean it's a mo relatively modern armor, so there's no need to be all chippy and uh, war torn, um, so I just kept it just a little dirty, and it was out for maneuvers, out for some runs, um, so I think it looks great, anyway, like I said, I highly recommend this kit, so hope you guys go out there and model. Um, now for my next build, might be a couple of weeks uh, it's right now, uh, next couple of weeks, uh, taxes are due here in the U.S., so I'm going to be kind of busy doing my taxes uh, during that time. And yeah, hope you guys are having fun with your kids, and be, be safe out there. Right. Thank you for guys for watching, and all your support. Take care. Bye-bye.